Hello, everyone. So this is the first Monday of um, March. I can't believe it's March already. And that means it is Social Justice Monday. So I chose a book of an activist who is absolutely incredible. And you may have heard of her before. Her name is Jane Goodall. Um, and she has an incredible story. So I'm going to read the book. And then um, afterwards, I'm going to show you this really cool website. So let's go ahead and get started. It's called The Watcher. Jane Goodall's Life with the Chimps. I'll go ahead and read a page and then I'll show you the pictures. Here's her as a child. Jane, Jane, where are you? Jane, can you hear me? Everyone has been searching for hours and hours looking for little Valerie Jane Goodall. Then from the hen house, Jane came running to her mother shouting, I know how an egg comes out. At five years old, Jane was already a watcher. Jane watched all the animals in her world, big and small, earthworms, insects, birds, cats, dogs, horses. Jane quietly watched an English robin at her house for days and weeks. She saw him come close, closer, then into her room to eat some crumbs off her bed. When spring came, the robin even built a nest in Jane's bookcase. Notice how long that took. It took a very long time for the bird to feel comfortable. Perching high in her favorite beech tree, Jane read about Dr. Doolittle talking to animals and Tarzan living with the apes in Africa. She wanted to go to Africa too and talk to the animals and live with the apes. When Jane's school days were over, she worked and saved to buy a ticket to Kenya. She hid her earnings under the parlor rug for safekeeping. Crossing the ocean, Jane stayed on deck and watched the waves, even when the cold wind blew. She saw all the different blues and greens of the sea and fish that glowed through the dark water. As Jane stepped into, onto dry land, she closed her eyes in joy. Jane looked for her work with animals. A famous scientist, Louis Leakey, was looking for someone to watch and study chimpanzees to help us understand the most, the animal most like us. Would Jane be interested? What do you think? Yeah, absolutely. Yes, she would. Jane traveled to the place in Tanzania where the chimps lived. Go. I wanted to learn things that no one else knew. Uncover secrets, she wrote. She set up camp far away from human dwelling. The first night, Jane lay awake listening to new sounds, the croak of a frog, the hum of crickets, the laugh of a hyena, 
the hoot of an owl. And looking up at the stars, she knew she was home. At dawn, Jane walked into the forest. Up high, she found a peak to watch from. Every day she climbed to the peak to look for the chimps. But though she could not hear their pant hoot calls to one another, though she could hear their pant hoot calls to one another, she didn't see them. She still can't find them, but she can hear them. Jane walked down into the forest, hoping a chimp would appear. Still, the cautious chimps stayed hidden. Secretly, they watched Jane. When will I see a chimp, she wondered. Then Jane fell ill with malaria, which you can get from mosquitoes, it's a virus. Laying in her tent, burning with fever, she almost lost hope. But then when, her, when the fever left her body, she tried again to get close to the chimps. More weeks and months passed till one day the chimps let Jane see them. She stayed in the background, never hid, acted uninterested and quietly watched. Now, Jane watched every day all day, even huddled in the rain. She saw the chimps accept the rain, not look for shelter as we do. And she kept notes about it all. You have to be patient if you want to learn about animals, she wrote. Notice how much she's acting like the chimps. She's staying in the rain with them also. Some nights, Jane even slept on the peak to be near the tree where the chimps were sleeping. She woke at dawn and saw them slowly rise from their nest, sit for a spell, and then go off to find food. Put them all sleeping and then she is over here. All right, let's see what happens. Jane named the chimps. To her, each one was different, just like us. A gray bearded chimp was the first to approach Jane. She named him David Graybeard, first and last name. David Gray Graybeard has, yes, he has taken bananas from my hand so gently. No snatching, she wrote. Here he is. Notice his gray beard right here. David Graybeard let gray beard let Jane come closer. She watched him shape a stick into a tool to dig for termites. Before this, nobody knew that wild animals made tools. Did you know that? Interesting fact. She watched David Graybeard eat meat. Before this, everybody thought chimps only ate plants. And because David Graybeard trusted Jane, now the other chimps let Jane come closer too. Chimps all around me, what a day. Chimps near, chimps far, Old men, young men, ladies, children, babies, teenagers, a lot, she wrote. Hmm. 
Look at all the different chimps. Which one's your favorite? Jane watched the chimps when they were happy. She saw them hold hands and hug and kiss and laugh just like us. Jane watched the chimps when they were angry or scared and they stood on and their hair stood on end. She saw them swagger and throw tantrum, temper tantrums and kept out of the way. There are some fun pictures. Jane watched the chimps at the Kokom waterfall, leaping and swinging in awe and wonder at the tumbling water. At night, after supper of beans and tomatoes and onions, Jane listened to Mozart and Bach. As she wrote, um, as she wrote up her notes from the day, years, years of notes were piled high everywhere. Jane needed help. And so assistants came to watch and write. One day, Jane sadly left Gulm. Good morning, gardeners. Happy Friday. Sorry, guys. Um, all across Africa, forests were being cut down and the chimps were losing their home. Poachers were shooting grown chimps and kidnapping their baby, babies to sell to laboratories, to the circus, and as pets. Jane's beloved chimpanzees were in danger of becoming extinct. They needed Jane to speak for them. Jane hated to leave her friends, but she knew she must. She traveled to big cities and small towns uh, the world over, month after month, year after year, asking for help to save the chimps and the forest. Jane returned to the forest of Gombe um, whenever she could. She climbed to the peak, calling hello to the streams and hills and trees, David Graybeard by her side. Jane watched and listened again to the pant hoot calls of her friends. And when she went back to civilization to speak out for the chimps, Jane carried with her the peace of the forest. The forest in Gombe where she talked to the animals like Dr. Doolittle and walked unafraid like Tarzan and watched and wrote and opened a window for us to the world of chimpanzees. And that is the end. So just from being a little girl, okay, she grew up and she is still alive today. Um, but I have a really cool website, her website, that I am going to show you. Um, she is 86 years old. I just looked it up. So social justice can be about treating people the right way. And that's what we focus on. But also she's been an advocate for, for the chimps. Um, so I'm going to show you her website. So here it is. It's janegoodall.org. And there's some really cool stuff on here. Um, in fourth grade, we've looked through it before. It says we are a global community 
um, conservation organization that advances the vision and work of Dr. Jane Goodall by protecting chimpanzees and inspiring people to conserve and save the natural world we all share. We improve the lives of people, animals, and the environment. Everything is connected. Everyone can make a difference. And there's some really awesome things on here. Um, this is when she was younger and in Africa. And here is her speaking, um, obviously not super recently, but this is a more recent picture of her. So I encourage you to go take a look at it. I hope that you enjoyed the story and um, stop back next month for another Social Justice Monday. Bye guys.